guys and welcome aboard this Brussels Airlines flight SN501 to New York JFK from Brussels. Here we have our US security checks always cause so much stress, but I'm through and we're ready to board over here. One picture of the aircraft and I'll go on board. So here we have her, the Brussels Airlines A330-300, which will be taking me over the Atlantic to New York JFK today. I have the pleasure of getting to try out their business class products for the first time, and I'm going to share all my impressions from the flight with you in this extensive review. There's the Finner A350 over there. Um, Quite a small jetway and only one here in Brussels, but that's nothing to complain about. The airline's business class is located in the forward part of the cabin and has 30 lie flat seats. As you can see here, I was seated in the last row, which was seat 7K. Uh, and here you can see the cabin, which feels pretty open and spacious when you come in. There's a lot of space when you're sitting in the seat all the way to the back here. And wow, I might just have to record the wing with this camera because Jesus, that's a good view. So here we are, seat 7K, which is the last seat in the business class cabin, and as opposed to the other so-called throne seats in front, it does not have another armrest here, but it still has this armrest over here, and you're greeted by an amenity kit, pillow, and the usual other stuff, a water bottle. Champagne, and then it's uh, champagne with cassis. I'll just have the water for now, thank you. So the flight attendant first came by and offered to hang up our coats, which was nice, and she was all smiley, which is fun again. Um, and then she came around with drinks, and I uh, went with my civilized, uh, mature thing of taking a glass of water. <laughs> but um, yeah, they had champagne, orange juice, so that was all great. Look into the seat now. Um, First thing I see down here is a little compartment to stow your shoes. Let me see if I can, there we go. Oh, it's actually pretty big. Let's see if my big boots will fit in there. Okay, the foot compartment is definitely not for boots like these, but for smaller business shoes, which I understand since we're not in boot class. Um, and then here you can see the leg room. For lounging, the leg room is great so far. Uh, it's a little like restricted to the sides, but you know, it's it goes well. You can put your leg over here. Um, yeah, usually you don't have a problem with leg room in business class, and this is actually super comfortable. And it, when it goes up like this, it makes you almost seat sit in a lounging position straight away, which is nice. Um, so here's a little bottle holder where I put my GoPro. Here's the actual bottle holder, here are the in-flight magazines, and here's a holder for your own magazines, which I also think is great because I had my own magazine, I had my own thing I wanted to put on one of these. So they have like the airline side and your side, <laughs> which is cool. Um, then let's have a look at the seat side controls. I also like the look of this, how it's, uh, although it's obviously not real wood, it looks pretty classy when they do it like that. And then there's the reading light, which can be turned on and strengthened or weakened by just turning it around. I'll put that away for now. And then there's a power port, um, USB charging, some kind of audio jack. It could be for the in-flight headphones. And then here... Ooh, okay, how do I get this out? Here somehow are the headphones. 
Now, they don't look branded or anything, and we'll see how they are later on in flight. Uh, here's a little note they have. That's, that's nice to know, because I've heard some horror stories about economy class that I would rather not reiterate, but I'll just leave these here for now. Um, and I don't know what to do with this bag, I'll use it for my passports actually, that's a nice use. So let's see what else we have here on the side. Here are oh, the seat controls, call flight attendant, um, lighting, volume up, down, and information. We'll look at that a little more later as well. And this button, I'm kind of scared to see what it does. Oh, okay. That ejected the, um, the tray table, which swivels an awful lot, which is actually pretty cool. And ooh, it's very big, very, very big. And now I have like a mirror here so I can show you the size of the tray table. But yeah, it's nice. Push inward. Ooh, okay. And then swivel. And then clips in like that. So here are the other controls and there's all these different seat controls which we'll also try for later on in the flight. Here's another storage compartment but besides that, let me see, there's not really that much storage which I would wish I had. You know just a little compartment to put my cameras and stuff like that. It's still 25 minutes till scheduled departure time and it seems like almost everyone in business class is on board, which is a nice early boarding. Um, and I think we're done looking at the seat, guys, besides obviously the recline and stuff later and the entertainment system, which we'll take a look at. Now, it's time for the amenity kit. Also, another funny thing I just thought about is that this <laughs> cup, although in glass, which is nice, is Tiny, tiny. But it's okay. I'm sure we'll get tons of drink during the flight. Um, so I actually really like the look of this amenity kit. It's black and sleek. And for business class, I think it's great. So let's have a look inside and see what it contains. But it's also pretty nicely organized when you open it, which it will not be for much longer. Here is a look at the amenity kit and its contents. So we can start here with this little face Stockholm thing and it's so ironic and they have a whole booklet for it. So ironic that I just left Sweden and I'm greeted with this face by Stockholm little kit. So high-end Swedish cosmetics. Let's see what's in here. They had a whole a picture of a whole group of stuff. Oh okay. So we have white tea moisturizing lotion and lip balm, and that's great. I was really praying for lip balm because my lips are getting dry now in the winter and with a flight this long, you really don't want to land with like bleeding lips, you know? So yeah, we have those two. Then we have a little tissue pack that says Brussels Airlines, which I am obsessed with. A little Brussels Airlines pen, which I'm also obsessed with and will probably write all my, ex my school exams with in the future. Um, foam earplugs. A really nice toothbrush, one of the nicest I've received on an airplane, and a big toothpaste, so I definitely don't have to worry about running out of toothpaste on this two-day trip. Ooh, a, an, a standard eye mask, which is plain. It would have been cool if they'd had like an airplane on the front or something, but they're great as well. And these normal kind of socks which I will not be wearing because I am actually wearing my Yorkburg compression socks. Now, I'm sure most of you can relate to the feeling after a long flight of your feet getting really uncomfortable. It's not that they fall asleep, but they will really start to almost hurt, especially if you're wearing tight shoes. I'll definitely be wearing these when I fly in the future. So if you want to check out the Yorkburg socks, I would definitely recommend them. They're in the description below. I'll link them. So there are the Yorkburg compression foot sleeves. The cabin crew have come by twice so far and I'm not the type of person who yearns for um, constant attention so it's the perfect amount and uh, they've been perfectly attentive. I also want to say about this seat because when I booked the flight I was originally in one of the couple seats I'll show you 
what they're like. So every other seat in this cabin is single, which they call a throne seat. And then there's these couple seats, which are for people flying together or just strangers who happen to be seated together. Um, and I was in one of those seats. And I didn't really think about it then. I thought it was great, but when I saw the seat was available, I selected it purely out of the wing view I knew I'd get, which would be better here. The feeling of having direct aisle access, I know you have to like weigh between what you want, but having direct aisle access is such a good feeling. Just being able to get up whenever you want, especially when I'm switching cameras and everything. It's so different from economy, where every time when you want to get up and there's two people or at least one person next to you, and you're like, eh, I'm gonna have to disturb them. And it's just a luxury that really is priceless. Here there's not really any way you could comfortably work on this ottoman, I don't think. This flight I will actually try it, because I will have time. And I'll do, I'll try to do some homework or something and see how sitting here and writing with the window view works. But this is definitely a bit bigger than the one on Finnair, so it's a little more of a stretch to get to the window. And although I don't really mind it, it's something to think about. And you do have a great wing view here, as you'll see in the takeoff video. Then, just to show you what's in here, there's a normal safety card. There's even a instructions card for business class, which is nice. The Brussels Airlines Be Inspired magazine, and Duty Free. As far as the entertainment system went, the screen was actually not as far from the seat as it looks in photos, so it really wasn't hard to stretch out to touch the screen. And I'm not going to show you the entire selection that they had, but it was extensive, so you'll definitely stay entertained regardless of flight length. Also, here's a coat hook, which I didn't mention before. Now, just for some practical information, Brussels Airlines flies one daily from Brussels to New York and back with a sort of standard departure from Europe at 10.30, arrives around 1 p.m., and then departs again at 6 and arrives back in Europe at 7 a.m. So it's perfect for connecting flights via Brussels on an A330-300, don't remember if I already said that, which is a perfectly nice aircraft. It's not the most exciting, but it's definitely not the worst aircraft you could be on on a transatlantic trans flight. Oh, 767. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, a very good uh, morning and captain. Welcome aboard this uh, flight bound to uh, New York uh, GFK. We are fully ready on uh, schedule, expect to uh, push in a few minutes. The flight time, uh, not that long uh, today, 7 hours uh, 45 minutes, uh, so that should bring you ahead of schedule into GFK. Wish you a pleasant flight, thank you. Quite a cool yeah. little belt they got here, and the normal big fat one they have in business class. So let's see if I can do this while recording. Great. Comfortable. Feel safe. One little thing that I'd love to see Brussels Airlines improve is their safety video. Because in all other aspects they're such a cool, almost hipster airline, but their safety video feels like it was made 20 years ago and it could definitely be spiced up a bit. So the in-flight menus were distributed shortly after takeoff. Uh, so obviously there's no pre-ordering. I'll take out the tray table so that um, so that we can look at it. And I like how the table isn't really hazardous when it comes out because some tables can't really shoot at you, but this will keep you. At least it won't hurt you like some of the tables literally do in business class on other airlines. My friend Brussels Airlines told me about their updated menu, so let's have a look here at a table with a view. Cool. And uh, wine of the month, as well as beer of the month. And it turns out that Brussels Airlines is the leading uh, wine or alcohol airline in Europe. Uh, we'll see if there's more about that. Here we go. It starts in English. So we have appetizer. is trout mousse served on a bed of leeks. Wow. And then starter, we have roasted filet of beef, beef with spice, smokes, or salmon with potato salad. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll have that one. Um, for main course, we have lamb stew, 
with new potatoes. <laughs> Carrots is pretty nice. Filet of cod. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be having fish today. That also sounds very good. Um, and here are the cheeses. And then for dessert, let's see, this is a fun part. A biscuit with pistachio mousse. It sounds pretty interesting. Alcohol-free chocolates. Looking forward to that. And then we have the menu in French. Menu in Flemish or Dutch. And then here we go. The champagne is Laurent Perrier. Airlines hat trick. What is this? Yep, best international wine list. That's fun. Um, and then here are the wines. We have this one right here, over here, red wine, South African. We have beers. Oh my gosh, my, my eyes were drawn immediately to the name Forbidden Fruit. I don't understand when airlines have announcements over the speaker systems that you cannot hear. It's so strange. And then here are some other spirits, liquors, uh, cold beverages. They have cranberry juice even on a non-US airline. That's good to know. Hot chocolate. That's fun. Decaffeinated coffee as well. And there we go. That's the menu for today. Here's all the storage and all the information we need. Let's have a look. So, oh, so there's also controls here for the seat. Um, and then there, uh, seat more or less firm. Um, massage. So seat softer, seat firmer. Oh, interesting. Um, lumber support. How do I? How do I get? Oh, lumber. There we go. Uh, mood lighting. Oh, it controls the light in here. Um, and then anyway, we have lounge bed takeoff. It's uh, pretty much it. US. Headset, uh, shoebox, tray table, and table deployment. Awesome. I want to say that the lumbar support is actually really comfortable, and I'm the type of person, I don't know if you are, but since I spend a lot of time sitting down at desks, and etc., I find myself slouching all the time, so lumbar support on an eight-hour flight, again, is good for your back and good for your comfort. Now, one, one little thing that Lucky, uh, my favorite travel blogger over at One Mile at a Time, pointed out is that not many airlines nowadays have these self-controlling uh, air nozzles in newer aircraft. And I know this isn't new, but it, that's definitely a nice thing to have. And then you can see the overhead lockers. I didn't comment on those. They're standard size for the A330. Okay, so it seems like this place where they uh, originally stored the headphones can actually be used for storage during the flight, which is always good to know. So my phone is now charging. This is the appetizer. So this is the trout mousse served on a bed of leeks and pine nuts with a ch charville. A few little nuts, a trail mix. I got the 2010, let me just check again. <laughs> the 2010 Chateau Goudou uh, wine, which is absolutely delicious and the water, so again, the slogan, which I cannot get enough of, whoever thought of this, good job. Oh my gosh, you guys, whatever I said about the description or when I read about it, 
This is absolutely, I keep saying absolutely, this is extraordinarily delicious. And that's what you'd expect from a Michelin star chef. But I'm impressed. For a starter, this is amazing. Even the trail mix is very good. There's a good variety of nuts. Um, once again, it's just perfectly with this wine. I understand why they have the best international wine list. Also, just one little thing is that it's actually very nice to plug the headphones in back here instead of, you can plug them in over here as well, but it's a little obtrusive, so that's a nice touch. guys the starter salmon a salad and we have a little vinaigrette for the salad and let's see there's there's some cucumber tiny tiny tomatoes and lettuce leaves in there so it's fine you know and then I had the Laurent Perrier champagne and look at this little thing this adorable little salt and pepper shaker So yes, I'm watching Tintin as my lunch entertainment. Look how much cutlery they give us. So we have two spoons, three forks, three knives, plus a toothpick. And they're all Brussels Airlines engraved. I feel like Brussels Airlines have sort of gotten tricked here because how on earth can I criticize a Michelin star chef? for his cooking and I think this this starter is good it's very good it's not the best thing I've ever I've ever had to eat and it wasn't really as good as the appetizer but it still tastes very good it's super fresh and let's not forget this is fish on an airplane that's incredible Okay, I'm on to the salad and just so you guys can learn a little more about me in this video, I, my favorite thing in the world is basically balsamic vinaigrette. I could drink it, so this salad is obviously a dream just because of that. But these, like these tiny little tomatoes is what I want to call them. I've never had them before. So here we have the cod main course with uh, red rice and pumpkin sauce. Now they served this out of a wrapper, although it was on the tray, so it's not super fresh. Um, like it doesn't look super fresh here, so but I'm sure it will be very good. I have wine, and she went to get me some cranberry juice at the front. So they were offering uh, a cheese plate as well that you could get. You could get the cheese plate and dessert basically. But I'm so full now and I've been eating so much from the business class this morning and then the lounge. So I, I just got the dessert. But this is a ganache biscuit with pistachio mousse. Looks very good. This is a nutty sort of mixture with a chocolate sauce, chocolate mousse, and then the pistachio cream. If seeing this doesn't make you crave something sweet, I don't know what will. And I can also say that it tastes just as good as it looks and as it's presented. So, after the meal, the flight attendants came around the cabin with a box of truffles from Neuhaus and gave everyone that as part of the dessert. And all in all, the meal service was done about three hours after takeoff from Brussels, which I'd say is a little too much for anyone, regardless if they're looking to sleep or work on board, because taking 35-40% of the total flight time just to pass time by serving a meal like this. So that's just one little note. I would love to see Brussels Airlines just shortening down the meal service a little bit, but still offering the great selection and uh, extensive range of products that they are offering. So the meal service is definitely an important part of the flight, but there are a lot of other things that business class passengers want the time to enjoy on a flight like this. Also, having been in and out of the overhead lockers a few times, I actually noticed that it seems like they put some sort of silencer or something on the, uh, on the manual switch or on 
on the metal buckle, on the metal buckle up there, you know, where you open it. Um, it's, somehow they've silenced it, so there's not that huge, there's no noise when you open it. And even when you close it, there's a very, very soft noise, which really makes a difference when you're trying to sleep. I know myself, when I'm sleeping on a plane, it's going to slam, so if I lock her, it wakes you up straight away. It appears I forgot to look at the headrest, so I just want to show you that. Because apparently it swivels quite a few degrees down, which I guess is good in sleeping position. So that's another thing I'll get to try on the return flight. But it does not have any side support. So the flight attendant just rushed through the cabin, offering everyone who's awake a little Spiculos, which is a delicious Belgian cookie, and I've seen it in, I've seen it in the Netherlands too, but it's, uh, it's basically a cookie flavor ice cream, and it's a very nice treat in the middle of working hard over here, so that's appreciated. We are 120 minutes away from New York, and the crew, I look like I'm being strangled. The crew is currently serving the pre-arrival snack, which is Brussels Airlines serves on all flights over seven hours. Okay, so here's a look in the onboard lavatory. With a little flower, there's no window, which is understandable on an older aircraft. Um, so, and then I guess this is the business class touch, a little more moisturizing motion towel. Okay, so here we have it, a sweet chili chicken salad, parmesan cheese, walnuts, it seems like a special type of Caesar salad, Caesar dressing, um, and then the only difference is really that there's sweet chili chicken, um, a little bread roll, and a dessert, which is oranges and some sort of marinade with almonds, looks delicious. This is giving me hipster vibes. Okay, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but this is quite possibly the best Caesar salad I've ever had. The Caesar dressing, I assume there's some sugar or something in there, but it was the perfect, <laughs> perfect. No, but it was the perfect acidity. And just, wow. This was, I'm so impressed with this. Time has come to have a look at the recline. So I, I have to say the complaints I read about this seat being tight are actually a little more extreme than I'd agree with. I don't think it's too tight. Here you can see what it's like when the seat is fully reclined for your feet. Feet. I have foot size 10 and a half uh, in American shoes and 44, 45 in Europe. And although it was a little tight squeeze, I didn't really feel claustrophobic and I definitely felt like I could sleep, especially if I was lying on my side. Let's have a look at this gift, which they handed out to all passengers in the business class cabin, which definitely is a nice little touch. So there we go. 25 chocolates box, I guess you call it, um, from Neuhaus. Now that's pretty nice. <laughs> It's also pretty nice because I can just put the bag away down here. Uh, I'm also pretty impressed because the pilot said we're going to be touching down at 12.30 while our scheduled arrival wasn't until 1.20, so 50 minutes out of schedule, which will give everyone plenty of time to pass through immigration, make their connections. Uh, so, good job there as well. So, 
also the purser announced about 20 minutes to let in. The purser just went around the cabin asking every passenger personally how they found their flight, what they could have done better if they didn't enjoy it. And just really made sure everyone loved the flight, which was a really nice touch to say goodbye and thank you for flying Brussels Airlines. And I heard several people being like, this was amazing, this was amazing, thank you so much. As I said as well, so... That's just another thing to show you. I, I'll summarize my experience with the flight after I land, but I'm pretty sure you get the impression of it. After landing, I had the pleasure of getting a Dantorp crew photo with the entire flight crew, and the woman sitting in the middle with the red dress is the purser who I have included a interview with at the end of the video along with one other flight attendant, so stay tuned for that. So that brings an end to the first leg of my trip and on Sunday I'll continue the review with my second leg. But I just want to say, the I feel like I'm advertising Brussels Airlines and guys, I'm not being paid to advertise Brussels Airlines. All the opinions were my own and I think if I were to be a little harsher, the first meal, the first whole course, I guess was okay pretty good it wasn't amazing but the second Caesar salad definitely was incredibly good and the service was amazing the seat was amazing and I had such a good time in general so that's just what I want to say and I want to leave you before we continue on to Sunday's flight with a little note that I had the funniest typical New Yorker um, uh, immigration agent guy from the TSA who was like he was really examining me to see to see what I was up to, like why I was here, all this strange stuff. So he was like, so he asked me about my education and what I do in Sweden. And then he's like, what are you doing there? You study abroad or something? Okay, don't despair guys. There's not much more left for the review apart from a little bit talking about the meals on the last flight and mainly how I slept on that flight. And I just wanted to share this view with you because this was the view from the front of the air train from Jamaica Station in Queens to JFK. And I can just tell you, I always take the air train. I love it. This is not sponsored. I just wanted to say and show you this because, wow. And look at that aircraft you can see taking off to the right. Pretty stunning if you ask me. As I cruised up to check in with my CalPAC suitcases, I found out I had almost missed the flight even though I was there an hour and a half before departure. So that's a little note that you want to be there extra early for Brussels Airlines. On my boarding pass it said check-in closed an hour before departure, so I'm not sure what that was about. But as you can see here, they were very helpful. I got to leave my beautiful bags and I was ready to go. So we're, I'm at my seat 1A and it seems like since this is an evening flight they give you a, a blanket straight away. Um, and interestingly, it was so funny, as if I didn't enjoy the flight here enough, they're now playing Lana Del Rey as boarding music. And I'm not going to go into how much I love Lana Del Rey, but um, that's definitely another little plus. So also compared to the last time, obviously. <laughs> okay, it's, that's it, well, people will comment if you're in the background, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so as opposed to the last side, obviously, since I'm on the other side of the cabin, everything is uh, mirrored. Um, so the seat controls are on this side, and I have my little storage area here. But this is far wider than it was in my seat 7F before. So if you want sleep, you might want to choose either one of the coupled seats because as you can see there's a whole lot of leg room there too. Or one of the or the throne seats in row one. And then up here now for boarding, which I didn't look at last time, there they have magazines and over there as well. Now I got an identical amenity kit as well for as from the outbound flight. So I'm thinking I might give this away. It's Mandarina Duck, a very nice brand. So tell me if you want it. I might, I'm not promising I'll give it away. 
but uh, maybe I'll set some sort of like goal on the video and then we'll see if I'll give it away at that point, guys. Um, and don't forget, you can still enter my giveaway for the Brussels Airlines model plane. So I just thought I'd add a few little comments about Brussels Airlines that I read about this specific plane uh, and about the airline in my life. Um, I was just looking on flightdiary.com in my diary of all my flights for the last years. And it turns out Brussels Airlines was my fifth most flown airline, which just shows how much and how many miles I spend on Lufthansa and stuff, but Brussels Airlines is my fifth. But still, that's a pretty good number and that's awesome. Um, and also apparently this aircraft, uh, this A330 is the 30th oldest A330 in the world, so it's about 22 years old, which is also pretty cool, um, as opposed to SAS's brand new A330, which they got like a few months ago, which I'm looking forward to try uh, in a few weeks or months, I'm not sure. I'd just like to apologize about how I'm dressed. The thought behind this flight is that I was going to sleep the entire time. Um, but it turns out Brussels Airlines do not have the same type of pre-dine service which I've seen with Aer Lingus where you basically eat dinner in the lounge, get on board, recline and sleep for the entire flight and don't really worry about anything on board which is a great service and I'm hoping to try uh, that with Aer Lingus in the coming months as well. And just as you watch this takeoff footage, I'd also like to give you my general impressions of seat 1A where I was seated because as opposed to seat 7K which was a normal throne seat, this was more configured like the coupled seats where you have a lot more sense of liberty by your legs and you can really move around due to the wider opening there. Also, it was nice to be this close to the lavatories, and although on Seat Guru it says that, uh, like, warning for galley sounds in this seat and that it may be a little hard to sleep, I did not encounter that problem. Okay, so here's a look at the return menu, and as I said, I was originally going to go to bed, but uh, you'll see here why I'm not going to go to bed straight away. Um, so here, they have the appetizer. And then starter. And the main courses, which sound absolutely delicious. Again, absolutely, everything's absolutely. Um, or they have this, the express selection. This is the appetizer for the return flight. And just like the outbound flight, it took them quite a while to bring this out. And then again, it took them about 45 minutes into the flight to bring out the actual starter and as you saw in theory they were meant to have an express selection but the crew informed me that the express selection only consisted of a starter and even after such a long wait they didn't include the dessert or the cheese like it was stated on the menu which was a bit of a disappointment but as i wanted to go to sleep right away i just went with it However, as far as the food I did have went, this was incredible. I've been craving this salmon all week long, and I can honestly say that this was one of the best appetizers, or starters as they called it, I've had in my life, period. And there you have it, from the point that they cleared the food, which was about 4 hours and 44 minutes from Brussels, I slept. And I slept very well, the most comfortable and deep sleep I've had on an aircraft in my life, and woke up 15 minutes out of Brussels. No one woke me up. I had plenty of rooms by my legs, really in abundance. I could turn around any way I wanted, the seat was wide enough, and even with my seatbelt on, as I said, I slept very comfortably. And also, it was just so funny because at the point when I did wake up, the cabin crew were still running around the cabin serving full trays of continental breakfasts. And I checked on the screen up to four minutes prior to touchdown. They were running around giving people cups of coffee and orange juice. 
and it was really amusing to see and at least in that way they really did try to maximize people's sleep by allowing them to have a little meal or have something to drink that close to landing. I was so surprised as I woke up to see how little time was left and that way I really did push the sleep as much as I could um, until the point where they would have probably told me any minute later to set my seat in the upright position for landing. One thing that I would love to see improve is the quality of the cover that they give you because right now it was a little flimsy, a little thin, and definitely too short for me and that's just something that would be so easy to fix and that I'd really appreciate to see in the future. At this point I'm also not showing you any of the vlog footage I recorded because that's pretty self-explanatory after four and a half hours of deep sleep, but I will summarize and conclude my opinion of Brussels Airlines and their business class product right now. So as far as the food went, it was inspired and exquisite, that's the best words I can use to describe it, the best food I've had in an airplane in my life probably. And then as far as the service went, once again it was so friendly and personal and I was just really impressed there. Again, the seat was great and it really depends on what area you're looking for, whether it's sleep or work and then you might want to select your seat in the cabin after that and of course whether you are flying with a companion or not. As you saw I did have a few complaints or criticisms which was mainly the length of the time it took for both meal services and just a few other small criticisms but other than that this was one of the better flights I've had in my life and I would definitely recommend flying Brussels Airlines if you ever have the chance. There's plenty of ways to redeem miles for Brussels Airlines flights if you can't afford to pay for business class which is a great way to get to try out the product especially on one of these longer services and as you can see my overall opinion of the flight is as the headline states. I used to think the A330 was boring but that was before I flew Brussels Airlines business class. So I leave you with this Dan Torp crew photo of the flight attendants and pilots on the return flight. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment what you thought. And until next time, guys, fly safe. What is the ideal passenger? That's a difficult question. I like every kind of passenger. Sometimes passengers are more difficult, but yeah. we can handle it. It's our job. And so, as long as you love this job, you don't mind. You don't mind to handle with all kinds of passengers. So what is the ideal passenger to you? The ideal passenger is the one that comes back with the same smile that we always give to them.